for your presence in this place, Lord. We welcome you, Jesus, to come and have your way. We push every distraction aside and we set our eyes completely on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, you are so good and there is no one like you.
trust you For the grace to trust you more that's our heart's desires we come here as your church today your people lord that our trust in you would deepen that it would strengthen that it would grow because as we trust you lord and follow in your ways it's then that we find out how life was meant to be lived the best possible way we prove over and over again your good ways as we trust in you so lord May that be our heart's cry for each one of us this morning to trust you more deeply as we leave here today. We pray your anointing over Pastor Pete as he brings your word to us today. God, may our hearts and our minds be wide open to hear and to receive and to respond to what you have for each one of us today. And We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. So good to be here with you this morning. Why don't you say hello, give a hug. A high five or something to somebody close by as you take a seat today. Well, it is so good to be with all of you today on this beautiful Sunday Father's Day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? And didn't it smell good when you walked in too? A little something special there, but welcome to everyone. I'm so glad you're here with us this morning, but especially if it's your first time, we want to extend a special warm welcome to you. Honored that you would spend your Sunday morning with us. It's exciting to have you here today. We'd love to know that you're with us, and the way you can let us know is by filling out our Connect card. You can either go to fcfchurch.com, tap that little button, or inside your program here in the auditorium today. We hope today is just a really um, encouraging and, and powerful Sunday for you, a great experience for you today. So we've just been having a lot of fun here at FCF, and more fun is in store, but sometimes I just think we have too much fun. Should church be this fun? I, okay, so apparently, so last Sunday we had a blast for ice cream Sunday, wasn't it awesome? Um, so we're excited, we've got our next one planned for July the 17th, so mark your calendars today, join us. We hope to be having Rita's Italian Ice, um, so that's a little special too, right? Can I hear from Rita's Italian Ice? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but the real point of that is just the wonderful time of fun and fellowship we get to have together as a church. So again, we hope that you'll join us on that Sunday. Another great way to have fun and connect with people, make some friends around here is our clubs. We've got a lot of summer clubs going this coming week, pickleball on Tuesday. We've got disc golf uh, and a number of other things. You can read about those in your program or go to our website or the app, but we really hope that, um, You'll take advantage of that. Again, just a fun and easy way to meet people and to connect and make friends. Little side note in your program, it says that the Single Moms Club meets today. That was my mistake, I goofed up. They meet next week, okay? So next week at the playground, you can join if that is a club that you would like to be part of. I read something this past week that just kind of really uh, hit me when I read it. It said, to make a living, you get, but to make a life, you give. Simple yet really powerful, isn't it? I mean, you know, we get and accumulate things in this life and we look for our paychecks and how can we make more money? 
and when we do that we make a living you know it's it's about surviving you know it's paying the bills maybe having a savings getting the things that we want but if we want to make a life it's all about taking the resources God has given to us and then giving and to make a life is to have impact in this little bit of time we have on this planet to impact lives to bless lives to help people to help other people reach their full redemptive potential in Jesus that's what it means to make a life so I, I hope this morning that 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 just resonates with you this morning too that you don't want to just make a living in this little time you have on the planet you want to make a life a life that will have, have impact and to do that one of the best ways is to give to what God is doing and wants to do in and through his church and you can do that by giving on our website, on the app, or utilizing the offering boxes as you leave today. So Pastor Randy is on, taking some vacation, some much deserved vacation time. So today, Pastor Pete is bringing us, folks, we were all crying at the end of first service. Just a little heads up warning there. Uh, I think it's gonna happen again too. Um, so it's, it's a really powerful message you have. We're so thankful and excited uh, for Pastor Pete's message, but don't think I forgot this. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Dads, thank you. Thank you for all you do for us, for all you give to us, for all you are to us, how you're an expression of God's love each and every day. Just in case you didn't um, get your father something, it's not too late. I didn't bring it up with me. You got one, Pastor Pete? Oh, do we even have any left in the store? We have some really cool hats. Uh, so if you didn't get dad a gift, and you're like, oh, dang, I got to do something. Just stop at the bookstore. We've got some great FCF hats for sale. But dads, we honor you today. When you're a dad, you have to play a lot of roles. Hey, 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 don't eat that. Don't tap on the brain. Okay. Oh, Lordy. All right. Oh, you're good. Oh. Take, take a left, turn left, turn left, turn left. When a man loves a woman, he... Honey! Alrighty, sweetie. This time I want you to concentrate and focus on the ball. You got this. Oh! Sweetie, your date's here. Two weeks, no TV, no phone. This is my door in my house. I told you not to slam it. You get the door back when I say you get the door back. I told you before. Don't you slam the door in my house. I told you. Ah! Hey, knock it off. Don't let me turn this car around. I'll do it. What are you wearing? No, I, you're not going anywhere looking like that. Go on back upstairs and put some clothes on. Okay. Oh! Do, 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 do. Got it. Ooh, sweetie, open the door. Get the door. Get the door. Get the door. Get the door. Open the door. Open the door, sweetie. Open. Bye. And Jesus steps in and stops everybody before they start throwing the rocks. And he says, let he who's without sin throw the first stone. You do all of this knowing that one day you will get fired because we all get fired. But by the grace of God, you might get hired back to be a consultant. Hey, sweetie, what's up? This is a fantastic Father's Day hat. It's got the patch, and it's got FCF Church on the back of it. Aren't these awesome? Don't these look great? I had to run all the way to get that during that video. So Pastor Kim, I hope you're happy wherever you are. Yeah, you're welcome. She made me do that. Why don't you look, if there is a father near you, look him right in the eyes and say, Happy Father's Day. Now, if this happens, to, if you happen to be married to that father, just go ahead and give him a big wet kiss. We love that. Just right now, go ahead and lay one on him. There we go. Fantastic. Only if you're married to the person, though, just to be clear. This is, we're opening a dating service here at FCF Church. No, I'm kidding. My name is Pete. If this is your first time, we're so glad that you're here. I have the privilege of serving here as the associate pastor, and I'm thrilled to be able to share what God has placed on my heart for this morning. We just came out of a fantastic series called Paradoxes. Did you enjoy the Paradoxes series? It was incredible. 
If this is your first time with us, go ahead and jump back and check that out. We have an amazing communicator, our lead pastor. So grateful that Pastor Randy is able to get some time away. Did you enjoy the bacon? Yeah. yeah. That was not my idea. I did not want there to be bacon on Father's Day. They asked me what I wanted, and I said, let's do bacon. It sounds good. Dan, was it good, baby? My man. All right. This morning, we're going to look at a couple of things. I don't know if there's ever been a season in the history of the human race where there's just been so much unity, just broad consensus, um, like we're all playing with the same cards, you know. There's just this void where there should be conflict. I mean, we're all thinking the same way. I mean, just throw out any topic and masks, politics, and we're all just so close. Let's come back to reality. Have we ever been more fractured? Has our community ever been more broken? And I, I just want to ask you, why? Why is it that community is so broken? And why is it that we struggle so hard to maintain relationship? I want to start this morning in Genesis. Just a little overview. Stay with me. Day one, it says he separated the light from the darkness, Genesis 1-4, and God saw that the light was good. I grew up in a church where you talk back to the pastor. Anybody else grow up in a church like that? Okay, a couple. So feel free. You can help me with this. Day two, it says separated the waters of the heavens and the earth and called it sky. Day three, called the dry ground land and the waters sea. Genesis 1-10, God saw that it was good. You are on fire. Genesis 1-12, God saw that it was Keeps going. Day four, separates light from darkness. 118, and God saw that it was? Good. Day five, there's a little quieter. Bring it back up again here. Created fish of the sea, birds of the air. Genesis 121, God saw that it was? Good. Day six, he creates animals. 125, and God saw that it was? Good. Then he creates us. God created everything. I want, I want to say this kind of a different way, but everything exists in relationship to God. Everything exists in relationship to God. And Genesis 2 offers us a little bit more clarity around the creation of man. Starting at verse 15, it says this, So the Lord God took man and settled him in the Garden of Eden. What's interesting is we've just come out of this passage with beautiful poetic language for creation and evening passed and morning came and it was good. Look at the turn it takes. Verse 18. Now the Lord God said, it is for man to be alone. Some would, would attribute our um, need for community to the, to the fact that we're broken in some way and, and, and that this is a void that we have. But ultimately, listen, this is before the fall of man. This is before trust is broken with God. This is a perfect environment. And still, what does God say? It's not good for man to be alone. So he creates Eve. The first human community is formed. And this, this is what the creator of the universe says in Genesis 1.31. Then God looked over all that he had made and he saw that it was very good. This isn't me saying something is cool or something is awesome. This is the supreme being, the creator of the entire universe says, no, this is very good. The title of my message this morning is, it's not good. In your outline, Inside the program, I, I've given you a couple of notes here you can follow along with. And there's five dash marks underneath this. And it's, it's not good for man to be alone. 
I've decided uh, I'm going to start a new segment when I have the opportunity to speak in almost every message. And I bounced it off of Pastor Kim, and she loved it, shared a couple of friends. Here's the new segment. You ready? It's called this. It's called, It Sounds Spiritual, But It's Not Biblical. Anybody ever heard somebody say something and you thought, wow, that sounds really spiritual. But they're like, where is that in the Bible? This was, this was a quote I heard somebody say a couple weeks ago. I don't need a church community. I can study the Bible for myself. Sounds spiritual, not biblical. This is actually, in fact, evidence that this individual is not able to study the Bible for themselves. It's not good for man to be alone. John Wesley is one of Pastor Randy's heroes in the faith. He, he was the founder of the Methodist movement. Incredible, incredible evangelist. And he says this. The scriptures know nothing of solitary religion. I'll give you the Pete Gillot translation. Is the Bible doesn't teach lone Christianity. It's not in there. We've just come out of a season of isolation. And for the next 15 years, psychologists and sociologists will study the implications of social isolation during COVID. But as many of you already know, the stats are in. In isolation, this is what grew. Alcoholism, depression, anxiety, health-related issues, Suicide through the roof. In isolation, every evil thing grows. There was a, a phrase that circulated in, in the church, I guess it was probably started about 10 years ago, and it was this concept that healthy things grow. Healthy things grow, so healthy churches grow. Anybody hear that before? Yeah, a couple of you have. I, I understand what they're trying to say, but I just disagree with it. Because cancer grows, is that healthy? So, so uh, mold grows on my bread if I don't keep it refrigerated, is that, is that healthy? Now things grow in the environment that we create for them. And what we discovered in isolation is in consistent isolation, evil things grow. It's not good for man to be alone. We were created for community. And sociologists discovered what the Word of God told us 4,000 years ago. It's not good for us to be alone. I asked you earlier this question. Why is our community so broken? Why are we so relationally fractured? I'm going to jump back to Genesis again. Genesis 2.16 says this. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree that's in the garden. Verse 17. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What's this word right here? We're free to choose. And what's sad is Eve chose to live outside of the way that God intended. The devil didn't have to convince Eve to lie, kill, steal. All he had to convince her to do was question God. Look, it says this in Genesis 3. It says, did, did God really say? Is that, is that what he said? But we know the end of the story. She chooses to live outside of God's plan. Trust is broken. And what happens? When we see it almost immediately, how did this affect us? It affected us relationally. It says that they realized they were naked. Genesis 2.25 says, at one point they were naked and felt no shame. This is not a reference to, to strictly nudity, but it's also to, to community. I got your attention now. I said nudity. Come on, stay with me. Take your kids to kids' church for sure. 
What, what was the result? It affected us relationally. And what do they do? I'm going to cover. I can't let you see who I really am. Did God really say? Naked and unashamed to now I must cover. Did God really say? Here's the problem. If God is the most beautiful, sacrificial, loving being in the entire universe. And if we didn't trust him, come on, we couldn't trust anybody. We certainly couldn't trust each other. So we cover and we hide. In your notes, you can write this down if you're taking notes in the program. This is in there. Our vertical connection to God had a horizontal reflection. When this relationship unraveled, every other relationship unraveled. And listen to me, this isn't a problem. This is the problem of all problems. When this fell apart, when trust was broken, all relationship began to fall apart because everything exists in relationship to God. The farther our community gets from Christ, the more our connection with God is fractured, the worse this will get. We've seen it reaching peaks that we've never experienced before. But he's calling us to restore. So I've, I've, made, it, I've made it so clear. Like we are broken, hurting individuals. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some work to get back in healthy relationship. But listen, this is super important. Don't miss this. The juice is worth the squeeze. Like it's worth leaning in to, mil- to build healthy relationships because we were made for community. So why? Why is community so essential? As I'm pushing you to do it, I'm saying, hey, it's hard, we're broken, but we have to do this. I'm going to give you three specific reasons why community is, is important and is why it's what God is calling us to do. I'm going to get a drink of water here real quick. You can talk amongst yourselves for a second. Point number one is this. Community fosters maturity. Community fosters maturity. Maturity. Well, how, does, how does a community foster maturity? Through accountability. I'll put it this way. Uh, how many of you have ever wanted to skip church on a Sunday? Go ahead, stick your hand up. Don't act so holy. My hand is up. I've wanted to skip church on a Sunday, and I was the one preaching. So how many of you have wanted to skip church on a Sunday? Okay. But we come. Because we're accountable. I came to church when I was little because my dad said, if you don't go to church, I will slap you. So I was like, you know what, dad? I believe God's calling me to church. (laughs) The context of accountability, maturity is developed. Hebrews 10, I love this verse. It hits us from so many different perspectives. 10.24, it says, let us consider how we may, what's this word? Spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Verse 25, not giving up the meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. This verse talks about it from a couple different perspectives. First of all, this is my message in a nutshell. We need to encourage each other, spur one another along. We need to keep staying together. Gotta keep meeting. Gotta gotta stay together. The the word for the first church was ekklesia, the Greek word ekklesia, which means a called out gathering. That's what we are called to. There's another part of this though too. This word spur uh, is translated a couple different ways. We get encourage is, is used a couple times. Most common, it's the word provoke, which means to kind of push push a little bit. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Love that verse. Doesn't that verse look cool on t-shirts? Put on a t-shirt. 
Hashtag ISI. Hashtag Father's Day Truth. Right there. We love that. But what does this actually mean? I mean, we have the encouragement that comes through accountability, which is where we lean in. We lean into a relationship and we help guide somebody and we bring them along. But let's be honest. There's times that in community, the iron sharpening iron, it's just us rubbing off of each other. Us feeling a little bit of friction. Are our elders here this morning? I don't see any in the room. Fantastic. Okay, can you bring that out for me? I'm going to grab this real quick. All right. I know what you guys are thinking. I wouldn't dare run a grinder on the stage on a Sunday morning. It fell out. Give me one second here. I'm sorry about that. Get back in here real quick. It fell out again. What's interesting is the axe is actually a little bit warm from the friction. You know what the sparks are? You know I wear glasses? You know what the sparks are? Little pieces of metal flying off of the axe. Maybe little pieces of us that God's using. Paul says that I would decrease and he would increase. But actually, the main purpose of this whole illustration is this. If I want to work on this axe, what should I put it in? Come on, what should I put this in? Advice. Advice. Again, more people knew than I expected. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put it in a vice. I'm going to be able to lean into it, and I'm going to be able to clean it up, and I'm going to be able to do work on it. But listen, when God wants to work on us, he doesn't put us in a vice. He puts us in community and then we rub up against each other and we how many know what an EGR is you ever heard of an EGR curious got a couple hands there two hands over there I'm gonna tell you something this morning you're gonna use this one moving forward an EGR in community is someone where there is extra grace required I, you're not, nobody, when I said that, there was no head, no picture in your head of someone that popped up, right? <laughs> God puts us in community with some people that bring us along and help through accountability, and then sometimes we're just in community, and we're just learning to live together in, as broken individuals. If you look at the epistles, they're all corrective, all written to the early, early church, all corrective. Why? Because we are broken, and then we come together. Now, I, I say this in love. Sometimes we get into these situations, and the friction starts, and we want to bounce. We sense that something's going wrong or somebody says something and they're offended. And you don't understand, Pastor Pete. Like, you don't know because, because they hurt me. You probably hurt some of them too. I'm offended. You offended them too. But instead of hunkering down and deciding, you know what, I'm going to forgive and I'm going to forbear, which is what Scripture talks about, we jump ship. We're out. We bounce. I'm going to go find a more holy church than this place. It's a great sermon. Pastor Kim is bringing the word next week, and she's going to crush it on this topic. So plan. You want to hear Pastor Kim speak next week? Come on, she's going to be awesome. She's going to talk all about that. But this is what we do. This week, my, uh, and it wasn't this week, it was a couple weeks ago, my, my four-year-old runs inside, and she is fired up, a lot of passion in that tiny little body. She runs, runs inside and says, Mommy, Mommy! And she's like, what, what? She says, Daniel returned evil for evil. <laughs> What'd he do? Well, I hit him with a stick and he hit me back. 
So you hit him first? Well, yeah. Come on. Forgive. Forbear. You're looking for a perfect church. I'm, I, I got some bad news for you. The perfect church doesn't exist. If you're looking for a place where you're never going to be offended and never going to be challenged and you're never going to get some iron sharpening iron and some sparks flying. Okay, uh, maybe the perfect church does exist. Let's just say, hypothetically, there is a perfect church. If you find it, do the church a favor. Don't join it. Because if you join it, it won't be perfect anymore. Come on, we're broken people that need relationship. And I, as I'm talking about this whole accountability thing, I feel obligated to share, because you get people that respond to this and think, well, it's my job now to go around this church correcting all these heathens I gotta live with, thumping their Bibles. It's not what God has called us to either. Picture somebody walking up to you and saying, hey, um, you know, I think you're selfish and you've never met him before. But hey, I think you're selfish and self-centered. I don't, I, don't, I don't like you at all. Great. How do you feel about lima beans? I mean, I don't care about that either. Like what? But what if, what, if, what if my friend Travis McCrory comes to me and says, hey, Pete, I, I love you. Like we're on a journey together and I, I see something in you. Like I see a, a, a blind spot that you probably don't, don't know about. Because of my relationship, he's able to speak into my life. This is what I'm getting at. Relationship gives you the ability to redirect, rebuke, and realign. But what happens a lot of times is we run from this. We want everybody to tell us how great we are. It's just how we're made in our fallen state. But if somebody really loves you, they'll get close enough to you to tell you, hey, I see this. And as, as, a, as a pastor, it's really challenging to see people in self-destructive circumstances, making choices that you just know are going to destroy them and going, man, I wish I had more relationship with that person so I could speak into their life, so I could help them. And I'll tell you what I do. I do it all the time. If I see that or I witness that or I hear that, I'll find out who's closest to them. Say, hey, have you seen this? Because relationship is what gives us the ability to redirect, realign. And this is something that we should Again, it doesn't make sense. It's not in our nature, but we should welcome this. We should welcome people looking out for us and getting our back. We should welcome accountability. I'm just going to tell you, you end up in any situation where someone is pushing accountability away and they are on dangerous, dangerous ground because we were not meant to live alone. In a couple of, uh, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going on vacation. I would tell you when I'm going, but you guys probably robbed me blind, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, in the next couple of years, I'm going to go on vacation. <laughs> and my, uh, my neighbors, are, we're, we're friends, and so I, I'll ask my neighbors to watch my stuff. I'll, I'll say, hey, you know, just swing in. Gene, come in and watch my house, check on my house and watch my stuff, make sure everything's okay. I can't see it, so if I can't see it, I want somebody else to watch it, make sure, you know, nothing happens, anything. Let me ask you this. Who's watching your spirit? Who, who's watching our soul? We're concerned with our stuff and every, how many of you, when you go on vacation, will ask somebody to watch your house? Let's see, check on your stuff, yep. Stuff or your soul? Let me ask you this. Which is more important? I'll take it one step further and make it a whole lot easier for you. Which one's eternal? 
This is why we are called to community. This is why we are called not to live in isolation. In community, in relationship, content that's controversial becomes conversational. Like sometimes you have to have a conversation. That conversation is hard. It's way better around a kitchen table than it is somebody yelling at you from a pulpit. And in community, with accountability, we step into that. My next point is this. Community shapes identity. That's your third blank on your sheet. This is the one that I think most people struggle with because we've been taught something completely different and, and we've believed it. And th this, this is the thought process. We are told it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. All that matters is how you view yourself. Heard that? Yep. We tell our kids that. Doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. All that matters is how you view yourself. There's just one huge problem with that. In fact, it is a sociological impossibility. We are shaped by the community that we put ourselves in. I'll give you an example. You think you sound like Brian McKnight. You can sing. Ooh, you think you sing so good. Your friends think you sound like a dying goat. You think you're the greatest teacher in the world but your friends can't stand to listen to it. There's so many applications of this. Within the context of community, you discover who you really are. This is where we, we see this in Scripture. We, we do something else called mirroring. This is what mirroring is. We legitimately pick up on people's idiosyncrasies, their habits, speech patterns, even body language, just by being around them. We are being shaped by the people that we are in community with. So I'm going to ask you a question. The obvious answer, or the obvious question, is if that's the answer, what type of community are you putting yourself in? What type of community is shaping and molding you? We believe at FCF that you were made on purpose for a purpose. And that God wants you to find that purpose within the context of FCF Church. This, this isn't just some social experiment. This is how we are to build and shape community. Let's look at Romans 12. It says it this way. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. Verse 6. We have different gifts, gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophecy, then prophesy. If it's serving, then serve. Teaching, teach. Encouragement, then give encouragement. In the context of community, we learn who we are and are also shaped by the community that we find ourselves in. So, what kind of community are you allowing to shape you? Community is built on and established by what's known as a value system. So people create a value system, and this is what the whole community surrounds, which is why when you look at FCF Church, you see different age, socioeconomic class, political view, nationality, but we are a community because the value system that we ascribe to is the way of Jesus, and that is the hub or value system for our community. What does Christian community look like? Acts 2.42, it's not in my notes, but it, it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. That kind of tells us what they did, but where did they do it? Acts 2.46 says, Every day they continued to meet together in, in the temple. What does it say? Temple courts. They broke bread in there and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. I'll summarize this for you. It's large group worship, 
in the temple, small group fellowship in their homes. That's what this is calling us to. It's a great model. In fact, it is the model that we have at FCF Church. It's our desire that you gather with us here on Sunday. And I'll just completely tell you, it's our, it's our heart, it's our passion, that every single person that calls FCF Church home is involved in a small group. Every single one of them. Because we're not meant to live this life alone. Community develops maturity. Community shapes identity. Community creates stability. That's the last fill in your outline. This is probably the most acknowledged trait of community. I could ask you, how many of you in this room went through a season of your life that was so hard and so challenging that if it wasn't for the community that surrounded you, you're not sure where you would be right now. If that's you, just go ahead and stick a paw up. Just go ahead and say, hey, that's me. The sad part is this. There's a lot of people in this room that weren't able to raise their hand for that. Ecclesiastes 4 says it this way. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. I don't mean to be a downer on Father's Day, but life is a series of struggles. You are either in the middle of one right now, coming out of one, or wait for it, getting ready to start one. What's God's solution for struggle? Community and strength. That's the support system that he's created for us. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 says this, two are better than, come on, you need better than that. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has to help them up. Whew. This is so, this like breaks my heart. And just, I'll take off a piece of armor for a second and say it this way. I struggle with this sometimes. I want to believe that I can do this on my own. It's Father's Day. Let's just be honest for a second. I think a lot of guys struggle with this. I don't need anybody else. I, I got this. Anybody like Mandalorian? The Disney show? Y'all were more excited than the first service. That's awesome. Listen to me. This is not the way. This is not the way of Jesus. We value independence. God values, what is it? It's this. It's not that we fall and have nobody to pick us up. There are three guys that have been in my life for 10 years one of them for even longer than that. And I've been through some of the most challenging things that a pastor can go through. And if it wasn't for those individuals and the community that we forged together, I don't know where I would be right now. It probably wouldn't be on this stage. Remember one night, it's a Saturday night, my father's a missionary, many of you know that, he flew back from somewhere, I think it was actually China, on a long flight, landed in New York and had an outreach the next morning. And he can't catch his breath, He's supposed to speak, and so the, the event coordinator finally just, my dad's, my dad's stubborn. He, I love you, Pop. Happy Father's Day. You're stubborn. He's typing back in the chat, you're stubborn too. 
didn't want to go to the hospital, and finally they just made him get in the car and go to the hospital. And he had four blood clots in his lungs, actually three in his lungs and one in the top of his heart. The pressure was so high, they said he's probably not going to make it to the morning. And the next morning, I had to walk on a stage and lead worship at our church. I, I couldn't have done that without a guy under each arm holding me up and saying, you got this, baby. God's got your dad and God's got you. Moses, incredible man of God, one of the greatest miracles, splits the Red Sea. But during that battle, he still needed Aaron and her to hold his hands up during that fight. Come on, he's calling us to community. Nick Van Scoy, I know you're hiding somewhere. Wherever you are, Nick, come on up here, man. Nick? Somebody get Nick. Come on, man. You take your time. We'll wait, Nick. <laughs> you eating a chili dog at the back? Yeah, now he's showing off. Okay, we get it. But, but do you lift, bro? I no. mean, seriously. <laughs> Nick, Nick didn't grow up in a Christian home. He lived a fairly transient life for a while. A couple of nights ago, Nick didn't know what I was speaking on. And we were, uh, after, after service, after a band practice, a couple of us were hanging out outside talking. And Nick just shares, he says, um, he says, it, if it wasn't for my church circle and you guys, I don't know where I would be right now. And there's people in this room that are going through stuff right now and you got nobody there for you. It's not good for us to be alone. And now we can't, we can't stop this guy from talking about Jesus. I can't get him to keep his mouth shut. There are people that attend this church because he walks up to him in a gym and says, hey, Jesus loves you. I just talking about the hair, but other than the hair, you're doing all right. <laughs> and a bunch of you, I'm gonna do it again. A lot of you have asked me what this key means. How many of you have wondered what this key means? Go ahead, wave a paw at me. This is a This is a courage key. I cried in the first service, I'm crying again. It's given to you when somebody believes in you, and they say they see greatness in you. Symbolically, God is gonna unlock the next chapter of your life and he's gonna use you. And Nick, We love you, baby. We believe in you. <laughs> we see greatness in you. We affirm you. This is what community is supposed to be. This is how our identity is shaped. People want to paint Nick with all kinds of different brushes, make him somebody else, but God has a plan and a purpose. Have you been blessed by Nick's ministry here on this stage? Let's stand to our feet. Why don't you get your guitar? I'm gonna make you sing something in a second. You know, I could say all kind of things to you, but basically the best thing you could say to me after this message is I'm getting involved in a group 
I'm going to make gathering a priority. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it important. Look, if you're watching online, we have people that watch from Canada to Mexico, all over the place. If you're watching online for location reasons, that's great. If you're watching online for health reasons, we're praying for you. But if you're watching online for convenience or habit reasons, break the habit. God is calling us to be a community. What I want you to do if I want you to pray about getting involved in a group. Don't even pray about it. I'm telling you God said it, so just do it. Get involved in a group. Maybe you'd say, you know, Pastor Pete, I tried a group. I went to a group and it was weird. I didn't like those people. That's fine. I'll be honest. We have weird groups. <laughs> try another one and try another one and try another one until you get in community. And if you can't find a group that you feel like is where you belong, maybe God's telling you something else. Amen? Maybe God's telling you to start a group. The question is, will you, will you answer? Do not forsake the beating together of the brethren as many are in the habit of doing. Let's spur one another on. Let's push. In community, we develop, develop maturity, identity, and stability. That's God's plan. It's not good for man to be alone. So my question is, will you be available? There's a song that we've been singing here that's just become a theme for this year for us, an anthem as we're seeing this growth and the church growing and building. God is saying, will you make yourself available? Heavenly Father, we quiet our hearts right now. God, we respond that you would find us willing and available. Come on, church, sing this with us. Narrow. night to the team I don't know who you'd be or where you'd be and I've been saying that for 30 years with this church 30 years every single year I don't know where I would be and I don't know who I would be so I thank the Lord so much for FCF Church and all that he's done here in our church and in my life through it so so grateful Pastor Pete thank you for that amazing message thank you so much get connected if today was your first time at fcf church pastor pete's going to make his way over to guest central he would love to meet you personally before you leave and if you need to talk or pray with anyone today we have some wonderful folks in care central that will spend some time with you and if you still need that father's day gift we've got more in the store so grab that before you leave have a great day everyone happy father's day